Good evening. I'd like to call a Harwich Planning Board uh, meeting to order. It's Tuesday, July 30th, 2019. It's 635. This meeting was rescheduled from last Tuesday due to the storm. Um, as we call this meeting to order, I'd like to remind everyone of our recording and taping notification uh, required by law. Uh, the town may audio or video record this meeting, and we do, and any person intending to either audio or video record this open session is required to inform the, sh the chair. Anybody? You're allowed. You're good? Okay. So um, we have uh, uh, three items on the public hearing section. Uh, first, of, first of them is a continuance. Uh, Charlene, do I read these all into the record? You don't have just announced that it's, or I'll, you know, uh, the first one is the PB 2019-22, Ronald M. Remendino and Lisa Stoker. Okay. Uh, they have actually requested an additional continuance to August 27th. Okay. I move that, that um, public hearing for the matter of PB 2019-22 Ronald Remendino and Lisa Stoker as owners um, is continued until August 22nd, 2019, no earlier than 6.30 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So carried. Unanimous. The next item we have is also a continuance. Charlene, it's PB 2019-19. Yes. Gary Darman, trustee of the Freeman Ellis Family Realty Trust. Care of J. Thaddeus Eldridge. PLS. PLS. The floor, is, the floor is yours. For the record, Thad Eldridge, New Southeast. I have before you, for your review, a two lot subdivision of a piece of land that was once owned by Freeman Ellis. It's actually still owned by the Freeman Ellis heirs, along with Gary Darman, the trustee of the, of the trust. It's a three-acre property that's over on Route 39 near Thompson's Field. We're looking to cut Dad, out. Can you speak up just a little bit? Because I'm even I, having trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. Sorry, I get quiet at times. Um, we're looking to cut two lots out of this, uh, two buildable lots. There's also a parcel in the rear of the property that has frontage along the old middle road but that is an unbuildable parcel. This is in the watershed. This is in um, turtle habitat. We've been through the NHESP and they issued their determination but failed to send it to us early, so we've just received that recently. And uh, we have a few waivers that are being requested, but it's fairly minimal. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Anyone? Uh, Charlene? Um, so, uh, the waivers, as uh, Thad indicated, they are asking for a waiver from the municipal lien certificate. This was previously not a taxed property. It is now being, will be taxed um, soon. soon. So there is no municipal lien. I won't, it won't be until I think January 1. Um, a waiver of the plan and profile. However, they have submitted a plan and profile for a shared driveway, so I don't think he actually needs that one anymore. Uh, length of the panhandle. Um, depending upon how, it's, how one measures it, uh, the way Thad measured it, it was 300 feet. The way the town engineer measured it, it was um, uh, 325, I Somewhere think. Somewhere in that range. Um, so it, it's, it's not clear on how one actually measures the length. Uh, but he has asked for a waiver on that. Um, I don't believe that is an issue. And then the vertical curves. Um, uh, there are some additional comments. Uh, town engineer uh, did review the plan regarding the to uh, topographical plan. Test pits don't appear to have been conducted at the location on the proposed infiltration system. It is recommended that the test pits be performed at the time of construction and prior to the installation of the proposed drainage system. Any revisions to the drainage system resulting from test pit exploration shall be submitted to the town engineer for review. Um, that is a recommended condition if the board mm -hmm. uh, moves forward uh, to approve. 
uh, the proposed vertical curve closest to uh, 39 is 80 feet long, which is less than 100 foot minimum. A waiver from this design standard may be required, thus the waiver from the vertical curve. Uh, stormwater management, drainage calcs, the drainage calculations reference ESE drainage uh, contribution map area. However, it's not clear that this map is included in the submitted information. What surface treatment for the proposed driveways are included in the calculations? Um, and how is roof runoff from the proposed uh, houses intended to be managed? Um, I do believe we covered that in the, the conditions as well, uh, proposed conditions. From the building department, uh, building permit obviously is required, and stormwater drainage regulations may apply. Conservation locus of the plan is incorrect. <coughs> That's been corrected. Uh, the area is entirely within uh, priority habitat. Uh, that's been addressed, and we do have the letter from uh, 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 Natural Fair Heritage. Um, fire Department uh, just wants to ensure that house numbers are on uh, Orleans Road and are clearly marked. Um, highway Department has uh, just advised that no snow or ice services by the town on a shared driveway. Health Department at the meeting of the Board of Health on June 11th, the board unanimously approved the definitive subdivision plan request with the following conditions. The lot shall be served by town water and two fully compliant septic systems are required to serve the dwelling. Police department had no concerns. Um, regarding my own comments, back in May, I did send an email to Mr. Eldridge. Uh, he did revise plans, both uh, submitted on both May 31st and June 18th, so he was very responsive to any questions or concerns that we had raised. Um, special permit for the shared driveway has been filed, and the public hearing is, well, supposed to be last week, is now this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Natural Heritage has commented on the application. Um, a copy is attached. It's in your electronic version. Mm -hmm. The representative, representative has requested a waiver from the municipal lien certificate. You actually said from the assessors. It's actually from the tax treasurer collector's office. Uh, the waiver plan and profile is no longer necessary because the revised topographical plan does provide a plan and profile. Um, within lots one and two, there are areas shown as uh, preservation areas and development areas. Development for each of these lots would be restricted to the development area based on the plan. It should be noted as a condition on the decision. Um, there's an additional parcel associated with the division of land. It shows it's parcel area three. This parcel does not have frontage and therefore is not a buildable lot. This should also be noted on, a, on the plan mm -hmm. and noted as a condition um, on the decision. Uh, number eight, it is important to note that the planning board cannot get involved in ownership issues or matters. Um, when it was known that this property was being looked at, um, Again, people came out, said, wait a minute, this was always owner unknown, um, but we don't get into ownership. I did provide a copy of the deed in the electronic versions show and a, and a map, uh, plan map showing the property. Uh, the board does have adequate time to consider and take uh, action on this application. A decision must be rendered and filed with the town clerk by September 9th. I would remind the board, unfortunately, when this is the chair's last meeting, um, and therefore, uh, for a <coughs> subdivision, four members do have to vote in the affirmative. So if it is conditioned, the four remaining board members would be the only ones who'd be eligible to vote on this matter. And that is all I have for right now. Okay. Uh, Craig. Um, just a point of clarification, and it's probably just a typo, but on page 205, under the waivers section, mm -hmm. uh, item number two, plan and profile, given the small nature of the shared driveway. And then Anything we, in italics was from the applicant. Okay. <laughs> and then, well, but my understanding yeah. is this is how the waiver would be worded? He doesn't need a waiver anymore, oh. if, yes, because he provided one on the topographical plan. Okay. So in my comments, and if you refer to page three of five, item number five under planning staff comments, the waiver for no plan and plan is no longer necessary. Okay. So the, my, what I was going to say was the last sentence in that paragraph says new road on locust. Stormwater runoff generated from the new road on locust. There is no new road is my understanding 
it's a shared driveway. It's a shared driveway. Okay. So but that the was, correction of that yeah. is not necessary because the waiver exactly. is not necessary. Exactly. Got it. Thank you. Is that it? One, yeah. one more question, please. Oh, yep. Um, my understanding from what you just explained, Charlene, is mm -hmm. that parcel three, the preservation area, doesn't have frontage, so is not a buildable lot. Yes. Is it possible at some future time that the shared driveway could be extended, provided the built uh, the structure built on development area two does not impede into the shared driveway, extend the shared driveway so pres preservation area three then becomes a buildable lot? Is that even a possibility? It, it is not, and the reason it is not, the shared driveway is not what is providing frontage oh. for that lot. Lot two's frontage is from the panhandle which fronts on Orleans Road. So that's lot two frontage, lot so one frontage yeah. is on Orleans Road. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm trying to explain this mm -hmm. without a plan in front of me. I usually have one on the screen. Um, so lot three, unless they were to put in a subdivision road that would then take up the panhandle, provide frontage, and then go out back. So basically no. you can't have two panhandle lots. You cannot. Got it. Thank yep. you. And there's no place to put a panhandle for that matter. Got it. If I could provide one very slim chance of making that a buildable lot, the roadway in the back is Middle Road, which would be an ancient way, which hasn't been used. It has trees growing in it. It's still very visible. If you look at the first page, there are preservation areas. If the box turtle no longer is a special concern species and the NHESP removes the restriction, then the conservation restriction can be removed from the properties. And if then Middle Road is upgraded to provide the frontage, then somebody could build on parcel three. But that's Accessing a lot of ifs. It from Middle Road. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. That's a lot of ifs that. Yeah. It's a slim chance, but okay. Yeah, I appreciate your candor. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? I wasn't questions? going there because of all the ifs. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how wide is the um, is the shared driveway? The shared section will be 20 feet paved. 20 feet paved. What's what's its layout? 35 feet. Um, the shared driveway easement itself, because it bobbles in the front, it has that, that curve, it really gets wide in there, and then it comes down, and that well, is... You have two lines there. You have one that's a solid line, then you have a dotted line. Is that out of the easement from the dotted line? Yes, from the dotted line, which is 50 feet from the, okay. from the side line. Okay. Any other questions? Forty. Anyone in the audience uh, care to comment? If you'd like, step up to the podium and make us aware of your name and where you live. Anyone? I have a I have a question, uh, Thad. Um, w why is there a delta in the length between your calculation and the town engineer of what 24, 25 feet? Where does the panhandle end? Where the lot starts to flare open or where the lot is full width. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Y yeah. So that's why. That's why. In order to make the shape factor work for lot one, mm -hmm. we had the 300 feet, and then you'll see that lot one has a curve to it. And your shape factor works better with curves than with corners. Sure. And so that's where we ended the. You know, the, the only reason I asked that question is I just wanted to make sure we were using the same methodology to, to get that number. I mean, it's 25 feet. Mm -hmm. it, could, it could mean a lot if you're looking at, at, at space between homes and that sort of thing. But on, on that, in that application, I don't think that's a, that's a, a huge issue at all. So, If I might, I, I agree with you. I think because this is so close. Yep. You know, if we were talking a difference of 50, 75, 100 feet, that would yeah. be a horse of a different color. But I think um, in this respect, you know, again, it's where do you measure it from? Yep. And yep. this is so close. Okay. 
Do we have any uh, any further comments from anyone? Okay, are there is there a motion on the table? Close. Move to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. So carried. Are there any other motions on the table? Move to approve with conditions uh, PV 2019-19, Gary Darman, trustee of the Freeman Ellis Family Realty Trust, a two-lot, one parcel, definitive oh. sub. Oh, wait, 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 wait. can, can you go back. to page four, please? Sorry. That's okay. okay so. I need the facts first, Joe. Yeah, Roman. Top of the page. I got you. Yep. Motion to adopt and approve the following uh, findings of fact related to the request for panhandle lots. One, lot frontage and lot width within the panhandle portion is 35 feet wide. Two, the length of the panhandle portion is slightly longer than the maximum 300 feet. However, this is not, <coughs> excuse me, is not a substantial deviation and therefore is found to be safe and adequate. Three, Suitable access by a driveway to such lot is provided within the panhandle and the access is wide enough and otherwise satisfactory for a driveway. Four, the panhandle lot meets the shape number requirements being less than or equal to 22. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Any opposed? No. No, it's carried. Okay. Now we want to go to findings of fact. Findings of fact. Move to adopt and approve the following findings of fact related to the definitive subdivision. One, said subdivision for residential uses are permitted in the RR and W-R zoning district. Two, said subdivision does not adversely affect the neighborhood. Three, all lots demonstrate compliance with minimum dis dimensional requirements for frontage area and shape. Four, Board of Health requirements shall be met. Five. National Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program requirements shall be met. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. And we want to approve. Vote. Yes. Next we have the waivers. The waivers. Sorry. It's okay. Motion to approve the following waivers from the subdivision rules and regulations pursuant to paragraph 400 article 2. One. The municipal lien certificate submitted. Two, the length of panhandle to allow 325 feet where a maximum of 300 feet is required. Three, vertical curve of 80 feet where 100 feet is required. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. And we're going to approve the definitive. Right? And then top of page five, top, yeah. Mr. Right. McFarland. Thank you. Well, to approve with conditions PB 2019-19, Gary Darman, trustee of the Freeman Ellis Family Realty Trust, a two-lot, one-parcel definitive subdivision shown on a plan entitled Definitive Subdivision Plan for Freeman Ellis Family Realty Trust, Route 39, Howard, Massachusetts, prepared by East Southeast LLC, dated 4-1-2019, revised 6-17-2019, Scale one inch to 40 feet, sheet one of two with waivers and a panhandle lot pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 41, Section 81K through GG, and paragraph 400 of the Code of the Town of, of the Code of the Town of Howitch for a property located <coughs> off Orleans Road. The Board of Health uh, requirements shall be added to the definitive plan prior to the endorsement of the plan. Test pits shall be performed at the time of construction and prior to the installation of the proposed drainage system. Any revisions to the drainage system resulting from the test pit exploration shall be submitted to the town engineer for review and approval. Three, waivers approved by the planning board shall be added to the definitive plan prior to the endorsement of the plan. Four, a planning board covenant and agreement shall be required. Five, the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program Deed reference shall be noted on the plan prior to the endorsement and all requirements shall be met. Six, the special permit for the alternative access deed reference shall be noted on the plan prior to endorsement and all conditions shall be met. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. That's it. 
Alrighty, you're okay on that one. <laughs> so next we have uh, the third item under uh, public hearing, uh, PB 2019-26, Gary Darman, trust, trustee of the Freeman Ellis Family Realty Trust, care of J. Thaddeus Eldridge, PLS East Southeast Inc. Seeks approval of use special permit for alternative access via a shared driveway uh, with waivers. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich, section 325-18P and dash 51. The property is located off Orleans Road, just west of number 1051 Orleans Road, map 52 and 62 in parens. There is currently no parcel ID associated with this parcel, and this case will be heard concurrently with planning board case 2019-19 that we just heard for a definitive subdivision close parens in the R-R and W-R zoning districts. Charlene. I'll defer to Thad. <laughs> okay, Thad. Good evening again. <laughs> Thad Aldridge, Southeast. Um, <coughs> so it makes the most sense to have a shared driveway for this development rather than two individual curb cuts. Uh, this was reviewed with the planner prior to filing and now we need a special permit for it. So we're requesting the same. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any, any at all, Charlene? Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Fire department had no concerns, engineering, or uh, fire and police had no concerns. Again, just the street numbers need to be show, uh, sure. clearly at yeah. Orleans Road. Yeah. Um, comments have been provided um, and pertain more to the subdivision plan. Um, regarding mine, the request is reasonable as this reduces the number of curb cuts along Route 39, Orleans Road. Um, Thad and I met on this um, a long time ago, he also met with other <coughs> staff and it was mm -hmm. agreed that yes, one driveway here is far superior uh, because of the speeds along that road and having multiple curb cuts just is, is not smart. Yep. <laughs> it's, not, it's not safe. Um, uh, they do not need a waiver from the plan and profile. The reasons, explanations provided uh, for this request are valid and a shared driveway does appear to be superior to access from the lot frontage and standard conditions are recommended. Okay, any, any comments or questions? Greg, any? I'm sure. Joe, any? No. Nope. Mary? Nothing for me. Okay, all right. Bill? No. Okay. Anyone in the audience care to speak up? Um, if you do, step to the podium, please, and let us know who you are and where you live. Anyone? Okay. Do I hear a motion, motion to close the public hearing? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's the quickest public hearing you've yeah. ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Move to adopt the following the proposed findings. One, the alternative access proposed is superior to the existing access as it would reduce the number of curb cuts on Route 39 Orleans Road. Two. The alternate access is proposed to be paved to a width of 20 feet and provide for drainage. Three, access, over, access is over the panhandle portion of lot two, which would meet the frontage requirements of a 35 feet pursuant to 325.18p. The use is consistent with zoning code, code and will not adversely affect the neighborhood. The specific site is an appropriate location for such a shared driveway. And finally, there will be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Move to approve with conditions the use special permit for alternative access for lot one, pursuant to the code of the town of Howard's 325-18P and 325-51 via the panhandle portion of lot two for property located off Orleans Wolf Road, just west of 1051 Orleans Road, map 52 and 62. There is currently no parcel ID associated with this parcel. In the RR and WR zoning district, based on the fact 
that the application meets the necessary requirements and criteria for approval pursuant to the Code of the Town of Howish with the above findings and following conditions. One, the special permit decision shall be recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and two, any change to the site plan shall be subject to further planning board review. All one. Go ahead, Jim. Before we vote, uh, Charlene. Yes, sir. <coughs> just assume that when they record, they they bring a copy of the recorded document to you. Yes, they have to. Okay. Otherwise, they don't get a building we, permit. We don't make it. A, I, I got you. Okay. Yeah. No. Our, our check or balance is the building permit. Yep. yep. Thank you. We have the carrot. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good one, Joe. Good question. Very good question. Yep. Really good. So, I have a motion and a second. The motion and the second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Good. Good shape. You should have every meeting like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Good luck then. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck to you. <coughs> okay, now we go to the uh, public meeting portion uh, of tonight's agenda. Uh, and the first uh, topic is meeting minutes from June 25th and July 2019. July 9th, 2019. Move to ad adopt. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so carried. Uh, the next we have uh, old business. Uh, this, this too is a, a, a continuance of uh, PB 2019-25. Christopher W. Auer, Mark Giarusso, Janet Auer, uh, Brian Blanchard and Scott Auer. Applicants Daniel A. Ojala, PE, Down Cape Engineering representative seek approval of a seven lot preliminary subdivision plan pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich. Uh, C.400 Article 2 is set forth in MGL C.41 Section 88 K-GG for property is located at 0 and 11 Littlefield Pond Road in Friends, map 77, parcel C22 and C20, respectively close Friends, and 103 and 105 Old Harwich Brewster Road in Friends, map 65, parcels R2 and R3, respectively close Friends, in the R-R and W-R zoning districts, uh, continued from July 9th, 2019. Good evening, Chair, members of the board. Uh, Dan Ogilla with Downkeep Engineering. I'm a land surveyor and civil engineer and helping uh, uh, the hours and um, some other uh, parties, including uh, Mark Giarusso, who is the hybrid built homes gentleman that's developed a couple of houses um, in here, uh, out with a, um, a division of some lands that are a little bit to the west of that Belmont Estates. Um, so what we're doing is taking the western portion of seven and a good portion of lot six um, and uh, creating a way. We're basically extending fishing game. The, um, the Rod and Gun Club is, we're going to give them the rights to use this road and then they'll have a little bit nicer drive in if they'd like to. And then we hook a left and come down and just provide frontage uh, for some lots. So there's already, we're taking an existing lot and making another lot. So it's a net gain of perhaps six slots. Uh, the hours and uh, some of their siblings or, or family own a couple of strips that are over here. Uh, the western portion of those, we're going we're gonna to A&R chop off the, the ends of them, and that'll be part of this division. Um, some of it is burdened by the electrical easement, but they're good-sized lots, and you can see that a house can fit in the uh, north of that uh, electrical easement. The... Um, Topography isn't too bad. It's it's a rolling area. We get some hills and dales, some kettle ponds, and uh, what would you call a kettle pond? It's a kettle hole uh, left by the ice deposits and so forth. You see, we had to go uh, through one there. Um, the um, property is uh, mapped for a habitat. It's recently mapped, so it's probably eastern box turtles, but we'll see. Um, so we're going to uh, file with those folks. Uh, we're going to give them building envelopes and. Uh, see what they have to say. Uh, we'll do that prior to the definitive um, and uh, get that uh, uh, underway soon. Mm -hmm. um, one of the requirements, you don't have to file a preliminary, but we, we did want to do that just to uh, see if there's any kinks to work out. Um, 
the um, Board of Health also takes a look at preliminary plans, and so you were nice enough to continue that to uh, get their input. They did approve it. Uh, they also looked at a hydrogeologic assessment. Um, they determined that uh, we are, the northern portions are in a zone two, uh, but we're a long ways from the well, and with one bedroom per acre, they were comfortable um, just uh, restricting it to the, uh, the normal Title V flows and uh, approved it um, without uh, uh, much ado. We're a long, long way from any embayments and, um, and, uh, or any ponds to groundwater flow being basically to the south away from a couple of ponds which are to the north. Um, so they, they did approve it with a, with a few conditions. Um, again, um, it, preliminaries are, are, you know, a chance to come in and talk about the land and, and, and what, whether this makes sense. Uh, sometimes you um, look at extending the road. Uh, this uh, roadway um, easement is something that comes up from the south. Um, it's a, um, a little spur that comes off of Derby Lane. Um, and um, we, we simply don't need to use it. It was, I think, the thought at the time those developers might have been coming up from Derby Lane to connect up. Now that we have a, you know, a, a nice route chosen out off a of fish and game, there's no real reason to do that. Um, and a butter did come and ask about that at the Board of Health as it's a publicly advertised and uh, notified meeting. Um, so we uh, chatted about that, and she was relieved that we weren't planning to use that. Um, concern about horses going up and down the power lines and such, and she said, "No, no, we're not. We're not. No, no plans on using that." So that was good. Again, these <clears throat> there is a house on this one. There's not a house on this one. I don't really think it's a buildable parcel. Well, I, I guess I defer a judgment on that. But in any event, it's just a long, thin wood lot. So we're just going to cut the end off, and those come to about right there, and uh, simply use that as as part of the land um, because it's all the same. We had everybody sign the application, and, and uh, it'll just be a kind of a joint venture. Um, the, the road is, is pretty gentle. Um, this exaggerates by a factor of 10, so it looks like a roller coaster, but it's really only 5%, which is basically a handicap access. Um, the handicap ramps are 8.3%, 8, 8 so this is 5%. So very reasonable up and down. Uh, following the grade uh, to lay out pretty nicely. We've got a relatively large uh, natural depression here. Uh, that we could uh, use as overflow. So you take the storm water and run it into the deep sump hooded catch basins uh, and secondary deep sump hooded manholes uh, to get the TSS removal that's required by the state storm water management guidelines. Then you're allowed to do direct infiltration. And then if there's ever a real 100 year type event, it'll overflow into a, a, a natural area. So it'll be uh, absolutely safe during any, any big events that uh, might be coming down the pike. So that was, uh, that was our thought on that one. This one will be just a standard drainage, but again, it's a very sa <coughs> sandy, typical soil, so we don't anticipate any problem with that. We'll do all underground utilities. It'll be connected to town water. Um, our firm did do the um, Littlefield Pond Road um, division a while back, um, uh, and be very similar to that, just uh, nice, nicely done roads. Um, there is some noise from the fishing game, so everybody's... Got to go into these with their eyes open, you know, as a pop, pop, pop on Sunday afternoons, and you have to get used to it or like it or just don't buy in here. But uh, it is it is what it is. Um, Can you show us where the fishing game is? Yeah, yeah this is their road up here, and they're, they're up they're in this situated area here. Okay. So I've been in there, but I... Yeah, yeah, so this is, um, if this is our division here, um, that's that's their, um, their main parking lot there. So it's a good ways to the west, you know, probably... 500 feet or so from the closest lot. My memory feet. any good. Isn't that isn't the entrance to their place gated? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And so um, I don't know originally whether the gate is here or here. I think it's down in this area here somewhere. Um, would be um, you know would would put it just after our uh, turn off. Yeah, where that where that curve in the road is, Dan. That entrance and gate is probably a hundred yards west. Okay. Okay. I know the Channing driveway pulled off before the gate, right? Pulled off, yes. And then it's a little ways past that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in there. It's been a long time since I've been yep. in there, but I've been in there. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice area. You know, it's a nice area. There is the, you know, the power line down here, and people like to ride horses in here, which is nice. Yep. Uh, and they go up in the punk corn and wherever across the street. 
Um, so that all can remain. Um, so yeah, not, not too much to see. The lots are, are what they are. They're all a little over 40. They all make shape. A little bit creative to make them all work, but we get, we get them to work. And if we have to, we'll swing the line a little bit over here to pick up a little bit more acreage. But it should be a nice little development. Um, the hours do a really nice job. They did the uh, site work on that other road um, um, all up in here um, and came out very nicely. Yeah, so, o Osprey Lane, or I think that's the name of it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. They, I don't know. If it's Osprey Estates, yeah. 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 I don't know if they still, I think it's still Littlefield Pond. It is Littlefield yeah. Pond, Little Pond, Pond Road. Little Pond Road. Yeah. Osprey yeah. Estates, yeah. Estates, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. So that's that's that. Um, the question from the engineering came up that they, they'd like to see a sidewalk. Um, I recall that we did get waivers on sidewalks on the other one, and I think we put a little stipend towards a sidewalk somewhere else. This is a dead end road, and people tend to like to walk on the roads here. There's not a lot of through traffic, so I don't think it'd be a, a great candidate for a sidewalk. Um, so if the board would entertain at the definitive time, perhaps we'll ask for a waiver from the sidewalks like we did on the others and just do a little in lieu contribution um, somewhere else in town where they could use them. Um, yeah. We have, we have a, like a fund, right? Don't we have yes. a- I believe it's some yeah. sort of a fund. Sidewalk uh, fund, yeah. sidewalk yeah. fund, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what about the Board of Health? What do they have anything to say? No, no, they're, they're pretty happy with it. Again, it's in a zone, so it limits the bedrooms to one per 10,000. Yeah. So their conditions, uh, the approval letter dated June 17th, I'll just read it. At the meeting of the July 9th, the discussion took place, the seven lot preliminary by Down Cape Engineering. Unanimously approved the preliminary plan request, following conditions. The Board of Health will not consider any variances to Title V or Howard's Board of Health regulations for any of the lots. That's typical on new construction. And I don't know how legal it is. I don't think they can find the power of a future board, but that's all right, we'll let them slide. Two lots are, but it puts us on notice. They don't expect any variances, yeah. which is fine. You know, that's the intent. The lots are restricted to one bedroom per 10,000 square foot, uh, which is what we talked about with the zone. There's a couple that aren't in the zone down here, but that's fine. That's, uh, we don't need more than one per 10. And served by town water. Uh, so that's, that's what they had to say about that. And there should be a copy in your file somewhere. Yes, uh, you letter. saved me so I don't have to read it. Okay. Anything, Charlene? Oh. Yeah, you finished? And, uh, the, board, the engineering department did ask about waivers, which are always very important to look at. I didn't see in looking it over any waivers, um, provided you consider that, you know, this is the road here, fish and game, and we're coming off it with an intersection. Um, if you considered this one road and that not a continuation of fish and game uh, drive, then you might consider the, uh, a center line radius waiver, but it's just kind of academic. Um, other than that, I, I think we meet it all the design criteria um, is full width pavement. We're not looking for any relief on that. The uh, vertical curve site distances are all fine. Underground utilities, drainage, um, the, uh, everything that I can think of is okay. The, the road layout is a little bit irregular um, and we're happy if you would like, um, sometimes it's awkward, but we could cut off a little piece and donate it to somebody. It's a this is Vegetation and Wildlife Conservancy uh, that went with the other subdivision in the Channing's driveway there. Um, if someone else wanted to take title of that, we could certainly uh, entertain that, or Fish and Game wanted to just pick it up as a little extra tidbit to add to their perimeter, we'd be happy to donate it to them um, as long as it's you know nicely kept. Um, so that's about it. Uh, the, again, the right-of-ways usually are steady eddies. This one is just a little bit wider than normal. Mm -hmm. The regular right-of-way could easily fit within it, but. It's just some remnants land that's um, best served, I think, as either a, a road right away or as a, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's the best it could be. So you'll end up with seven buildable lots. That's correct. Thank you. Greg? At what point, um, you mentioned kettle ponds. Yeah. Uh, at what point does this go before conservation? Um, we're going to check it out as part of the definitive process, double check everything, and uh, if there's any requirements to go in front of the board, we'll do it at that time. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Do you, do you want me to do my... Sure. Thing? Yeah, that'd be great. I may answer some of your questions. Okay. Um, conservation, it does need state approval because it is an endangered species area. Mm -hmm. um, 
conservation looked at it. I do not believe that there are any wetlands associated with this. Okay. It's a kettle hole, not a kettle pond. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, only fills up when we have a tornado. Probably. <laughs> Unfortunately. When's that ever going to happen? Never. Yeah. Never. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Ojula reviewed the Board of Health comments. Um, engineering, hot off the press. Um, you know, as you know, the meeting was continued from last week. He was a little bit busy, so he literally sent these at 4 o'clock today. Uh, the project appears to be within priority estimated habitat. Therefore, permit approval from Her Natural Heritage uh, will be required. And I am recommending that, well, I'll get to that. I'm jumping ahead. Um, a sidewalk is required for the minor roads. I won't get into the detail, but they do have the um, ability and the right to request a waiver from sidewalk construction, an estimate for the uh, what it would cost to install that is performed, and they can pay a fee in lieu of construction, which then goes into the sidewalk fund. Um, I think that's probably appropriate for this area. And, and the board, the planning board, is the one that has jurisdiction to decide that. Say yeah or your nay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you want, if you know, if you feel that a sidewalk is necessary, then right. yes. Okay. Um, engineering recommends that the proponent review the subdivision design standards and identify the relief or waivers that may be required. Um, stormwater management, drainage calculations, uh, engineering recommends that a hydrologic pre and post development drainage analysis with supporting calculations documenting compliance with the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, DEP Stormwater Management Handbook be provided with the definitive filing. <sighs> That's a long sentence. Um, NOAA Atlas 14 rainfall data is recommended to be utilized for the drainage analysis and closed piping analysis is recommended to be included. Um, now my comments, all uh, lots do appear to meet the lot shape factor requirement. Um, I do just say there is an electrical easement on lot five. A dwelling will not be allowed within the easement. Is there adequate area remaining for the dwelling? I do believe Mr. Ojula has responded to that. Um, the property is made up, I wrote this so long ago, I'm trying to remember what I wrote <laughs> this for. The property is made up of four parcels, um, 103 and 105 Old Harwich Brewster Road, map 65 parcels R2 and R3 respectively, 11 Littlefield Pond Road, map 77 parcels C20 and zero Little, font, little Field Pond Road, map 77 parcels C20. It does not appear that the entirety, oh, that's why, of the parcel is shown on the plan. There are two remainder lots shown that were not calculated with the filing fee. An additional 250 may be required. We got our, our 210, we got our additional 210 last week. Yep. Um, and we did get a plan um, from Mr. Ojula showing the entire area, and when they do the definitive, he knows he'll have to do the same thing. Um, the property does fall under Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, NHESP. I added that, thank you, Bill. I was only using the acronym before, and he rightfully called me on it and said, what does that mean? So I am now doing the whole thing. It's strongly recommended that the applicant, once preliminary approval is received, file um, with NHESP before returning to the definitive. He's already mentioned that they will do that. It just helps to expedite mm -hmm. on this end. And, and it also helps him in case Natural Heritage um, wants to see some changes, mm -hmm. they can do that before they come back. Um, the board has three options, approve, approve with conditions or modifications, um, or deny. It's important to point out that this is a preliminary plan. Mm -hmm. So actually anything this board decides under the preliminary filing, any you don't really do conditions, you just kind of do modifications. Um, whatever board is in place at the time of the definitive is not locked into what you just was decided at the preliminary. Yeah. So I just want to bring that up so in case, you know, after Jim leaves, we get a new board member who may not like something that, he's, that he or she sees. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not locked into whatever happened here. Yeah. This is a good time to give, you know, suggestions to the applicant on some changes like the roadway. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I would not want to see that carved off and made a separate parcel because then it has less apt to be controlled. 
Which one? The the little the the oddly shaped road <coughs> layout. Right. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. Isosceles it, it's, triangle. Yeah, it's it. it's a little odd, but there's nothing wrong with that being part of the road right of way. Mm -hmm. um, it just to me, there's more protection for the neighborhood and for the folks on this road yeah. that nothing will happen in there. Yeah. You know, it it won't be abused or misused or. Will that eliminate like that. the ex existing uh, easement that the, the Fish and Game Club has? <coughs> um, that's up to them. There is always a tele there's a telephone line that runs down that, so um, would be happy to revegetate it for them if they want to abandon it, but it, it probably would just have to stay there as some sort of an easement. Um, but we'll work with them if they want to uh, abandon it. Would be would be happy to do that and just vegetate that area probably. for them. Probably Look a little better. Going down there too, right? Um, yeah. Believe it or not, the electrical uh, cuts across from the power line. Oh, from the power line. Yeah, yeah okay. it's just an oddball yeah. that shows up on their land court plan. It's it's way over here, okay. um, but yeah, you'd think it would. But uh, it's phone, I believe, yeah. either cable or phone or both. Now, is there anything that will be in the deed yeah. to protect that fish and game club when people start moving in here and they start complaining about noise? Um, we well, the name of the road, the name of the road puts everybody on notice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, hmm, why yeah. is it called Fishing Game Drive? You know? I, I don't believe that when Littlefield, uh, Bill had asked, the, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off, sir. No, I, okay. it's uh, fine. Bill had asked a question if when um, uh, no, Littlefield no. Pond Road went in, if there was anything about noise or anything like that. Not the that way. I've seen in the records. Yeah, I thought there was. <coughs> <coughs> No. Um, I'm sure the real estate agents have to disclose it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Uh, it's I, pretty pretty obvious that it's there. You know, everybody's up, 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 you know. Yeah. And, and, and anytime anybody comes in to us to ask about you know property in this area, you know, we let them know about you know you're in the water recharge area or you're this you're that. And by the way, did you know that there's a shooting range not too far away? I think you know. And I think that's disclosed. The only thing, Dan, that I would comment on is. I would I would do everything in my power to make sure that there's no reduction in any opportunity for natural attenuation of noise, you know, yes. trees, anything like that that can dissipate some of that noise. I think that's really important. Um, I I know that the majority of the activity at the club goes on during the weekends, right? So you've got excuse me, I'm not finished. Okay, you can have the floor if you'd like. But the club hours operate later on in the morning than as opposed to 8 or sunrise. There is trap shooting on Wednesday and Friday beginning at noon and Saturday and Sunday beginning at 10. And then there are open ranges, uh, again, based on the club hours. So those things are all considerations. And anything that you can do to help preserve some of the natural habitat and trees and so forth is will pay dividends in the end to deaden the sound deaden the sound it's a ten, yeah. it's natural at, attenuation yeah at the um, that point was brought up at the health uh, meeting by some of the abutters and, and mentioned that, you know save what we can and I think that certainly makes sense I'm sure lot seven wants to be out in the front here we can probably conserve the back of that yep. and then um, and so forth um, unfortunately, or for you know, for what it's worth, some of this was cleared because it was part of the old Belmont Estates, and yep. Chris Keys cut it in already. Yep. Now it's some little pine trees growing up, but um, yeah, that's that's a point well taken, and uh, we'll see what we can do to, to to save as many trees as we can. Yeah. Is is it your client's intention to begin to develop right away? Um, I I think so. Um, I, I I think so. The um, They'll probably put the road in fairly soon. Yeah, yeah. It's a good market. And it may as well do it. Thank you. Now, if any of you folks are interested in speaking, please. Anyone? <laughs> I'd like to speak. Stand up. What's your name? My name's Gary Winstone, and I'm a homeowner in Fish and Game, a corner house. Um, I am not opposed to the gun club. I am not opposed to the development. I do have two concerns. One concern is about the increased noise from the gun club. 
since they've done all the extra development over the winter, put in all the concrete blocks in the outdoor ranges. Um, we have met with the gun club who were very accommodating and they're doing everything in their power to reduce the noise. Uh, my concern is um, since hybrid built homes went in and cleared trees in the back development, the noise has increased because it ricochets. My concern is if these guys go in and clear 11 acres of trees, they're right at the edge of the gun club, right at the edge of the outdoor ranges, the noise is going to be a lot more. Um, my other concern is um, a paved road to the gun club, which they're going to provide. At the moment, the cross section where they come out of the gun club, uh, people have put up stop signs because <coughs> there's a lot of kids in there now. A lot of people do not adhere to the stop signs. My concern is if it's a regular cross street, when people come out of the gun club, there's going to, one day there's going to be an accident. So if there's any way the road access can be pushed across so it's not a direct cross street, that would help slow things down. Um, and regards to gun club, um, we were told it is 24-7 operation on the indoor range and 8 o'clock in the mornings till sunset every other day. Uh, there is a lot more increased noise, so please, if anything can be done, to either put in extra planting or mm -hmm. leave as many trees as possible by the gun club, that would be great. I have no objections to the gun club or the development. When I brought my house, I knew there was a gun club, but, and I knew there was development behind me, but at the time I didn't know the development going in here. It's right by the gun club, and as a resident, almost at the entrance of the gun club, the noise is a big concern. They are working on sound sheds for the outdoor ranges, but they have some issues with engineering, and they have allocated funds for the indoor range. Uh, but as a resident, and spoke to other residents there, we don't think the noise is coming from the indoor range. It's the outdoor range where it's ricocheting off the huge concrete blocks that were imported during the winter months that are now below ground. Also, I have concerns about children there. There's just a berm where they can just go into that gun club. So I have to say, thank you. Thank you. Can I just speak to that? Please. I certainly understand concerns that, that you have. The gun club is not before the board right now. Mm -hmm. um, so there, the, this board cannot impose anything on the gu no, gun no, club no. right now. All, the, all that the board can do is encourage yes. that, mm -hmm. encourage that trees not be removed, right. um, you know, limit the number of trees removed. Yep. And natural heritage is also going to dictate some of that. Um, which is, which, which is works really to why the benefit I, of, I brought that yeah. up, right? So, yeah. I mean, they're, and your comments are, are, are well, well stated mm -hmm. and politely done. And I think it's important that we listen. Um, Joe? Yeah. I've fired on that indoor range, 45 calibers. And, and I have other folks with me been inside their fire when I'm outside. And as to the indoor range, I don't think there's any sound issues. Would you agree? I, I, I do agree with the indoor range, but when we had the meeting, I called a meeting with the committee at the gun club and they took us all around the club. Very, very accommodating, mm -hmm. great people. Um, but when we brought up the noise issue and soundproofing, uh, from their next committee meeting, they were allocated funds for the indoor range to soundproof it. We've tried to tell them that the noise has increased on the outdoor ranges, which the, we were told that the long ranges they use for competitions, which are mainly at weekends. And what we also learned was it's, it's all to do with the muffler on the gun that produces the sound. So as I said, um, when they're out on those long ranges outdoors, the noise since the trees have gone behind me on hybrid homes development, the noise has increased. So, you know, like my previous comment, I do have issues with the trees. If, if we can just leave as many as we can. 
And again, that's where natural heritage will be natural very, heritage. very helpful in this. Because yeah. what they're going to have to do is um, show natural heritage, basically the, the building area um, that can be disturbed. Mm -hmm. So that would include building area for not only the, the home, any assembly structures, the septic system, the driveway, those kind of things. Yep. So they're going to be very much restricted by what natural heritage imposes on them, M much more than actually this this board yep. can do. Okay. So that's that's a good thing. Yeah. Anything else? Um, As an aside, Mr. Chairman. Sir. When I served in the United States Marine Corps, I ran a rifle range for one tour of duty. Yeah. And so I took a particular interest in this room. Yeah. We started to go up there and use it. We used it, the Marine Corps Reserve Outfit used it as a drill place to, oh, really? to drill. That's good. Well, that club's been there since the late 30s. And uh, OK. Um, Sir. Richard D'Ambrosio, uh, my wife and I are 13 Littlefield Pond Road. So we are ones that will be affected the most by what's going to be happening there. Um, I have to give you a little history of what we went through in this whole scenario. In December of 16, we were the first ones in that subdivision to get in as buy a house. We put a deposit down, had a signed agreement for the lot that is now going to be the road. A month later, uh, the builder came to us and said, would you slide over to the next lot so we can use this lot as the road to go back to the development? My wife and I agreed to do that. Mm -hmm. He told us at that time that the paved road was going to be where the gun club road is right now. The lot that we were on was going to be planted with trees. The border of our lot now that slipped over would have a berm that would have plantings on it. That's what we were told. So we agreed uh, the lot we have now is, is better because it's not near the road or anything. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I understand, the road is proposed to be brought over from the gun club road, closer to where we are. Our bedroom is in the back of the house on that side. Mm -hmm. So now the road is going to be right up against our house. We've been for two years trying to get the builder to do the berm that he was going to do. Yeah. He is one of the applicants for this division. We've had nothing but problems with this guy. Mm -hmm. He will not do this berm. He came a year ago, took a, a plow and piled up some dirt and left, excuse me. Uh, for a year now, we've been trying to get him to come and fix this berm, to do the plantings like he was going to do. Can't get him to do it. So we're very leery of them saying they're going to do all these things and nothing gets done because yeah. we're <coughs> prime suspects to that happen to us. <coughs> yeah. Who's that person, sir? That is Mark Russo. He has two lots that are going back there. Now, we are happy with the decision we made. We knew there were going to be houses there, but the situation that he told us was going to happen has changed now. We asked him to give us boundaries of our property so we would see how it would affect us. For two years, we have not had boundaries <coughs> of our property. Me. We don't know how our back goes, how the side is affected. We are also concerned about the trees, like our neighbor just spoke. Right now, those trees do kind of deaden the sound. We knew the gun club was there. We hear the pop, pop, pop. We live with it. We, sometimes we don't even hear it now because we're used to it. But those trees coming down are going to make that a lot louder. There's a lot of kids in the neighborhood also. The traffic is going to be a little more. But again, I'm not <coughs> against the subdivision. I'm against this guy not doing what he's supposed to do. And I would hope that the board would kind of put some kind of a force, if you guys can do that, and ladies, to have these things done, which we've been trying to have done for two years now. Have you spoken with any of your selectmen? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I think you might want to get on their well, dance see, card be, and Before go in we saw that this was happening, we had, we had no way of making him do this. We were going to get a lawyer. No lawyer would take it. Uh, I would, I would call him. He was, I got a, a message from him May 7th. He said, within a week, I have a fellow named Speakman who's going to come there. He's going to fix the berm. He's going to put all the plantings in. Yeah. May 7th. Today is the end of July. Yeah. Nothing has been done. So. Two, three weeks ago at the uh, meeting with, uh, over here with the, uh, uh, the board, 
He came up to me and said, in a week's time, Speakman, I don't even know if there's a Speakman. There is. is. There is. There is. Mm -hmm. Speakman is going to come over there in one week's time and fix that berm. I have pictures in my, on my phone if you'd like to see. This is nothing but weeds. The only thing that's been done is my four-year-old granddaughter was walking and she pulled a couple weeds out of, the, out of the dirt. That's the only thing that's been done. Okay. So I, this I, fella being part of this bothers us tremendously because we don't think that we're going to get what we need to have done on this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm pleading to you, ladies and gentlemen, to, to give me some kind of an indication that he could be forced to do these things so that it would make it livable for us with this road now coming in. I'll let Mary. Mary. Uh, I just have a question. Is there um, a bond remaining on or? There is a bond remaining on this. However, that was not part of the approval by the, by the planning board. So the planning board can't enforce anything that is a private agreement. Yeah. This, this agree un unfortunately. This and yeah. and um, quite frankly, there's nothing the Board of Selectmen can do. So yeah. sending them to the selectmen yeah. would just yeah. be, you know, the cat chasing his tail. Yeah. Um, I, I, could, I could, you know, I, I think that the way to resolve this is that Mark is uh, struggling a little bit right now um, to get everything wrapped up. The hours uh, have a lot more juice than he does and can make this happen. And I think just working with him, I, I can't imagine we won't put a nice berm there. And if we make it part of this definitive plan process, yeah. then it's and enforceable. That's, yeah. that's what yeah. I was going to say. So because why of not just, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's something that Mark had represented. He mentioned to me, I think even Speakman mentioned he would, he would get to it. But it's just <laughs> a matter of funds, uh, you know, being drawn and, you know, how money is. It's, uh, it's the last place you spend it as, uh, it, well, it's, it's just hard to come by for, yes. for Mark right now. But once these lots are developed and, and he, he's got partners that are a little bit more well-heeled than him, then I think we can smooth that right over um, and uh, and create it because you know we want a nice attractive uh, subdivision. We don't want a weedy bank there. We want a, a very nice subdivision. And, and and if I might, that that is something because the oddity of the shape of the road right of way, mm -hmm. I think it is well within the board's right at the time of the definitive subdivision yes. to require and it's I don't have a nice board. But you know, in this first area, which is just to the north of, of right. your parcel, yep. um, to require there be, and you did require that on Arthur's Way, yes, um, on 39 um, down in East Harwich, yep. that a buffer of plantings and a berm yep. be constructed. So I mean, that is something that there's um, a precedent for that. Never mind the precedent; it's just I it's think within it's something our it's within, within our the board's jurisdiction. jurisdiction that within the road right of way, yeah. you can require certain things, like yeah. a sidewalk, if you feel a sidewalk is necessary. Yeah. That would be fantastic. But more appropriate, if I may, sure. Mr. Chair, sure. but more ahead. appropriate to yeah. do it in the definitive. It has to be in the definitive. Yeah. It, it would have to be in the definitive. Like that, and that's why I kind of prefaced or ended my comments that this is a preliminary review. This Nothing that the board says or does this evening locks has a any future way. board in. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be enough of you still on the board when this comes in as a definitive. <laughs> it will also be in the meeting minutes, even though you don't see me writing anything down. <laughs> we'll be listening to this and doing minutes for this. Yeah. So, you know, those will be in the minutes. One um, of so I think so it is something that, yeah. that can be addressed. Um, just for that matter, uh, you know, the, the, the applicant may want to look at adding other buffers and other areas along the oddity-shaped area. Um, for for that for that portion, yeah. just one thing, Dan, and and it just came up. Lot seven. I don't know if that um, if that needs that little tail right there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right right here. I don't know if you need that for your land area or your shape factor. You know, if Is it that forty thousand zoning. Yeah, no, we wouldn't need that. Need you for the yeah. furniture. So if this, um, yeah, good point. The furniture. Oh yeah, you do. But not Thanks the whole Joe. thing. But not the whole thing. Yeah. So I mean, if that's an area where there could also be, or even as part of the lot, even though it's not within the road layout, if there could be some plantings there to help buffer the other properties, right. there's not much you're going to be able to do with lot seven. Yeah. You know, to to provide yeah. a buffer. But I. Well, think we might there be able to jiggle areas. things around a little bit. Uh, and that will take a look at that, yeah. You know, I, I think it's, um, honestly, Dan, I think it's, a, it's great that people come and speak up. Uh, they make their points. Uh, these are things that 
I know you guys consider. Oh, yeah. And I and I really I applaud you for coming and, and talking and I, having this. I appreciate this. that. Could I, can I, can I take you back a couple more things? To, uh, if you can if you can keep it brief. Yeah. It's brief. Um, as the lady just mentioned, we are south of what the road's going to be. Yep. The prevailing winds come right across at our house. Yep. Yep. I would like to know um, the roads. Are they going to be yep. put in right up front and paved? Because if trucks and everything are keep going back and forth there, we're going to get clobbered. Yeah. yeah, so we typically, I could just grab that if you like. Uh, we put them right into binder right away um, so that you won't have that dust. Uh, okay. So that you, they, uh, two and a half inch binder, um, and then we, we usually wait until the last house, and then they'll do the top afterwards. Gotcha. Okay, and I appreciate that. And the last question, sir. Sir. Um, again, uh, two years ago, this builder was supposed to stake out our lot so that we knew exactly where we were and how this was going to affect us. That has not been done. Mm -hmm. Could that be done so that we could see where this is coming right up to us? No, I'm not so sure. Didn't I stake that lot out you once? You did not stake it. No. Uh, I, put some, did not I, stake I put it, some. Sir. I put some bean poles out there. I don't know if anybody pulled them out, but but it's a very quick matter to do. We have on the GPS. It literally bond. take about yeah. half an hour. And to we're, stop we're some holding beans. a bond too, so I'm sure they'll do it. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Because again, we don't know where things are on our lot. We don't have yeah. any idea. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, you it's, do what you want. <laughs> I'd rather not have him doing staking out my lot. Yeah. Oh, okay. no. I'll <laughs> oh, do no. respect, and I and I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that that's your property. You 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 sh you should. I, well, actually, you, it's if I it, it's incumbent upon the developer <coughs> yeah. to put the bounds in, yeah. Yeah. and we are and the board is holding a cash bond yeah. for that purpose. And he has a he has a stamp that he's uh, not going to uh, jeopardize. Yeah, he's I, not. I have a I professional have license to defend. Yeah, no, that's 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 yeah. we don't we don't. Put <laughs> I understand. The, we the, get the developer yeah. is John is on little, but he's a minority interest. Yeah, little but, field yeah. but little field yeah. 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 So the, the the bounds do have to be put in. Yeah. Yeah. There is a bond, yeah. so that when that happens, all, I, I don't know. But it's all good. If the gentleman wants to get his money back, he's got a pony up. Yeah. <laughs> or do yeah. do what he's required. Yeah. I have a That's question. what I mean by pony yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. On the northwest corner, is that section you've left there, is that for future road to go through there? So uh, show me here. Um, that, uh, yep, right, right up there. in here. Yeah. Um, that, won't, that straight? Yeah, that's that's for fish and game. I know that is. Yeah. But you have a boundary that you have that curved. Yeah. Then from the end of the curve yep. to the other boundary, is that going to be that for future access to that property? We drew it like that. I have I have no fish and game is all. I don't. It's like hurting <coughs> cats when they do anything. Right. I don't think they'd ever do it. But if it's if they want to, it's there for them. You know. But we just well, laid out a way that it's there for somebody. I to mean, buy. that's kind of what you know. Instead of putting a one foot reserve strip and saying nah, nah, enough nah, for nah, a road. Yeah, we put enough for if they, well, if could they ever be, wanted to. If they decided to sell all that property, it could be. A Silence the guns. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not on our radar, but we set it up that way just in case. If I may be heard uh, very quickly, uh, Doris D'Ambrosio, 13 Littlefield Pond Road, Harwich. Uh, I just want to make a correction. Um, the agreement regarding the berm with um, Mark HBH um, LLC was a written signed agreement. It was not a personal verbal agreement, just so that's on the record. Yeah. But it wasn't with this board. No, it's no, no, but you. it's it, yeah. right, but so it is a, a sign. So, okay, yeah. well, it's a legal document. I'm an attorney, I want to make sure yeah, the no, records. We, <laughs> no, I understand. Would but, that we could do something? No, but, no, yeah. I understand, but I but you had indicated it was a you know an, a, a, a personal okay, agreement, yeah. but it's not. It's a good. Yeah, that that, that I'm sure is binding, and he's he has uh, mentioned it to me before his intention to do it. I think it's just you know trying to get the monies up and get sure. it done. <laughs> Well, you know, it's every excuse in the book, but you know, you can't yeah. plant in August; it'll just die. You know, so you got to wait until the fall Especially now. This August, and, yeah. yeah, it's it's just. Well, we've gonna, been there two years, so. Uh, oh, there's you know, again, he's. Uh, we hear a lot of excuses, and there's no excuse for that. But uh, it does. I think this year got away from him. This the growing season. Yeah. Any other uh, comments from the board? Anybody? No, sir. Anyone else? It's not a public hearing, so you don't have to close it. Don't have to close it. But you I, do uh, need to vote. On something 
Move to approve the preliminary plan entitled Preliminary Subdivision Plan Off Land Off Littlefield Pond Road Can Howitt. Continue. Can you take item? Can you do number two? Approve with modifications. Certainly. Okay. Yes. Thank yep. you very much. We'll approve yep. with conditions and or modifications the preliminary plan plan entitled Preliminary Subdivision Plan of Land Off Littlefield Pond Road Howitt, Mass. Prepared, prepared by RB Hour Company at all, dated June 10th, 2019. Scale one inch to 40 feet by Down Cape Engineering Inc. Subject to the issues raised by all town departments, including the requirements of the Board of Health Review, the <coughs> town engineer, and the town planner, and review and sign off from NHESP shall be required prior to the planning board rendering a decision on a definitive plan application. Your motion. Do we need any conditions? I, no. I, I don't believe so. I mean, it's We're going to be in the minutes about the buffer. Yes. So. Yeah. Is, is there any way to soften that just in case they're like pending while we file the definitive? Or did it say approve the definitive? What did it say in that? For which one? For the NHESP. Um, review and sign off from NHESP. Mm. Mm. I mean, we it, technically, mm. like I said, Anything this board does ground. now for the preliminary yeah. has yeah. no impact yeah. really have to deal yeah. on the on the definitive. We've got to deal with it one way or the other. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it in there. It's just yeah. if, it, if it was dragging, I'd like to be able to at least file with the board. But uh, okay, yeah. you can file. Yeah. But the problem is the board really is not supposed to render a decision yep. on mm -hmm. something that is before natural heritage. I thought it was break ground. Is it? Is it? Uh, I think it's okay. Well, yeah. that's, that's fair enough. It, it also, has to be done. So. And also, if God forbid, natural heritage requires changes yeah you know you then redo the mile you got to redo yeah. everything you have to so. come back yep yeah yep. i don't know if nobody seconded i'm sorry we yep. are having to do i hear a second, second. Uh, all all in favor aye, aye. aye. Uh, any opposed uh, so carried and i'll translate to the owners about that berm to have everybody focus on it so thank you folks thank you very much and thank you folks who spoke up too. That's, that's, that's <coughs> thank you for listening. Good. Yep. <coughs> so the uh, the next item we have are briefings and reports by board members. And uh, and while we're doing this, I, I wanted to uh, make a comment here as someone who's uh, worked in a capacity in a major corporation. Uh, that focused on environment, health, and safety. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the great job that was done by our emergency responders, both the police department and the fire department during last week's tornado. Uh, you could tell just by driving around town, they had a plan, they affected the plan very well. And I think the, the biggest point that we could all uh, be grateful for is that there were no injuries. Nobody was hurt. Uh, there were no fatalities. And I really <coughs> uh, commend uh, those folks for a job well done. And I would encourage everybody when you, when you see either of the chiefs or deputy chiefs to make sure you thank them for that. So that's, that's kind of my report. The other, the other report is this is my last, uh, my last meeting, um, and I, <coughs> I've resigned, and that will become effective at the end of business tomorrow, the 31st. I have decisions to write. <laughs> and um, I'll come and sign all those in the morning. Don't worry about it. So I gotta do them first. <laughs> you'll get them done. I know. So even if I, even if I have to come at the last minute, you tell me. I'll be here. So. Okay. Um, but I think this uh, planning board um, demonstrated tonight again that we really will listen. And, and I think we've been very, very careful in our approach and have taken time on some issues that really needed it. And we've also been pretty fast acting. And like Charlene said at our last meeting, we've done as much in six months as we did a year ago. So I think we're getting better. I'm uh, we're getting busy too. We're getting, we're getting busy. busy. Right. I'm very, very pleased with this board, and I think it was a distinct honor and high privilege to have been uh, sitting on this board and, and to also act as the chair for the last year. So thank you all very much for all of your help and support, and thank you so much for just being as, as helpful to me as you were. That, that was 
wonderful. So thank you all. That's all I have. You can change your mind anytime you want. <laughs> I don't think he's changing it this time. <laughs> no, I think I'm good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I would just also like to extend uh, my thanks for your leadership in, in the year that I've been on the board. It's been very helpful and you've had some interesting public hearings. Yes. Um, which you've worked very hard to control and yeah. um, I think that has gone very well in the long run. So I thank you for that. Yeah. I'd also like to just piggyback on to what you said about um, the town of Harwich and the tornado um, uh, activity that uh, in addition to the police and fire the DPW did a heck of a job oh my god uh, they the sure town did. hall people I mean yeah. I don't want to steal everybody's thunder um, I know the selectmen's meeting last night uh, Norm uh, Clark fire chief went through a, a list of, of yep. people and um, it's amazing how well everyone worked together and yeah. how quickly um, they were able to to get things back to semi-normal where we are uh, today. They did a great job. Uh, they did. All Every, everybody involved, Eversource. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent four <laughs> hours counting down trees. Did you? On yeah. various town property. Because so, trees are money. I mean, you lose a tree, right. it's it's important, or a yep. damaged tree, yep. you know, there could be repercussions. So It's a sad thing walk, yeah. going around and seeing some of the trees that have fallen. I haven't stopped to count the rings. I don't no, know that I could. Oh, I mean, Brooks Park Hollow. Oh, yeah. Brooks Park. 124 that's... Oh. Yeah, and then they're all feet around. They're all stacked up. I mean, it's okay. sad. Yeah, it is sad. I have a, a very close friend who was in that business, uh, the tree business, for many, many years. And he called me this afternoon just to make sure that I knew and understood what was going on in the town of Harwich. And he's from Chatham. Uh, and he said, Jim, the work is, that's being done and the equipment that's there and the force that's been brought to bear is really amazing. And you really should go take a look at it, and, and I, I did. So um, I just, uh, I think this is a special place. It is. I agree. I, I'm amazed I as agree. I drive around town to see these bucket trucks from Connecticut oh, yeah. and yeah. all over. My goodness. Over. May, I was talking to a guy <laughs> waiting for power, begging him to turn our street on, uh, and he was from Maine, York, Maine. Mm -hmm. yep. um, he really, they yep. did it. They all did the there job. were a lot of Aspen Tree Company trucks here. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. saw them. Yeah. Who were they? Are yeah. they like a national company? Yeah, they're huge. Yeah, they're, they're big. They're real they're big. Yeah, yeah, they're I everywhere. About that. Yeah. They're huge. They must be Eversource's main contractor. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. So any any so, other briefings or reports? I, I do. Um, getting off the tornado, um, I'd also like to express thanks to Charlene and and Elaine, who is not here for the job that they did on the. Um, we had one of the shortest public hearings tonight on probably the longest public hearing that yeah. we may have had, uh, the Harwich Retail. Mm -hmm. I know they did yep. a heck of a lot of work, a uh, lot of documentation to get together and disseminate out. Mm -hmm. A lot of trees um, killed. Oh, sorry, well, yeah. no pun intended. That was <laughs> yep. bad. None that, none that have come down. But, um, well, maybe the paper company's happy. They, they, they really did a lot of work. And then I, I put some additional work on Charlene in that um, – I had some questions. I had wanted to uh, submit a document that I had put together in anticipation of a discussion for a referral to Cape Cod Commission, um, but the applicant withdrew. And subsequent to that, I end up, long story short, Charlene and I, I had some misunderstandings by email, so I came in and I mm -hmm. said, I'll only take a half hour, <laughs> and I think I took Two Almost and a half two hours. Hour it was and fine. Half. It was cool. Right. It was all was good. Right. good. And and so a lot of it was learning experience yeah. for me, and it led me um, to kind of read in detail some of the the um, committee instructions uh, mm -hmm. document that's put out by Harwich. Mm -hmm. And as I think you all know from my previous comments on Harwich Retail, I had read the Cape Cod Commission documents yep. from page to page, and we have some discrepancies in understanding for lack of a better word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so what I'm suggesting is and I'm making a motion if that's required I'd be you, happy you can to. it's not on the agenda it's not on the agenda. okay on the agenda. so what I would request is that um, we uh, put it uh, put an item on a future agenda 
to discuss uh, process and protocol so that to make sure that we're all of the same understanding and um, so that when we move forward in this type of thing, not just related to Cape Cod Commission referral, but other things, for instance. Uh, and just as an example, I'll give you the applicant, uh, Harwich Retail withdrew. Um, we uh, made a motion to accept the withdrawal and we so voted. We did not close the public hearing. The document that I read said we have to close the public hearing first and then have a, a discussion and then a vote mm -hmm. to accept or not the withdrawal. Little things like that. Charlene explained to me it's suspenders and belts. I yeah. think was the terminology. And, and also, if I, we have a yeah. we have a request for withdrawal, we don't have to close the public hearing. That's something I would like to further discuss because mm -hmm. maybe somebody had an objection to it, yeah. but never had the opportunity to have the conversation. The documentation that I had done in anticipation of a debate or a discussion about referral um, would have been something that I would have discussed at that time. Um, to get it made a part of the record. Yep. Um, <coughs> we didn't have the opportunity to do that, and now the record is closed. Um, so I'm not going to address that. That's over and done with. But just those types of things, and I don't want to go through the whole thing now, but I would like to have that as a future agenda item. Sure. If that makes sense. And if there's any questions, please. You can do whatever you want now. <laughs> <laughs> the easy answer. Yeah. No, I, I think, uh, I, I, look, feedback is a gift, and you learn from it every time. And uh, we've certainly gotten our share of feedback, positive and negative, but we've made progress the whole, the whole and way. And I think mostly positive. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. So keep listening. It's one thing you can do, and that helps to build trust, which I think this board did. I'm very, very pleased and proud of what you've done, all of you. Thanks. Jim, could I? Sure. Yep. Do I? Do we? Do I need to do something to nope. get it on the agenda? Or Future agenda it? item. It's Process right and protocol. You did. Okay. Charlene's it. You did. I didn't know if we needed to vote or have a consensus. No. Okay. You can't vote. It's not on the agenda. So we have our liaison. I'm learning slowly. Believe me, I'm learning too, being a new yeah. selectman. So right. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to, thanks for just a second. Um, name for the record, because not everybody yes. knows you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, name is Stephen Ford. I'm a selectman here in town. Um, on behalf of the selectman, I wanted to thank Jim for his service, uh, his very thoughtful and effective leadership, uh, both on the planning board and as a, uh, as a volunteer and contributor to this great town of Howitch. Uh, we're going to miss you greatly. We hope everything goes well for you down in Georgia. Yeah. Hopefully you come back real soon. We'll see. <laughs> you just but again, back. We, no. we, we really appreciate what no. you're doing. Thank you so much. I, I, uh, I love Harwich. Uh, I know we'll be back every summer. Lots of friends here and uh, you know, it'll, it'll be, uh, it'll really be nice and you know the the nice thing is if you go somewhere like that and Gail and I've moved many times over the course of my career this is this is now our 12th home um, you know the thing about that is you find a place and you um, you either like it or you don't it's pretty easy and if we don't like it we can always come back <laughs> and uh, and and you know I, I uh, I've thought long and hard about this, and so has Gail, and we've got, uh, we've got great and strong relationships, but it's, it's, it's something we're looking forward to as well. So, Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Ford, you have a bunch of trees on that lot. How'd you make out? Uh, I did okay. I did okay. My Good. My neighbors got uh, Tom's a pretty good. He got whacked, yeah. So. so. You still have one more agenda item. Okay, so we have uh, board elections. Oh. We're going to talk about that? Can defer to the next meeting. I move that we defer it to the next meeting. I, I would. Go ahead. Anybody want a second? He second. doesn't need one. Doesn't need that's one. fine. Okay. I, I think that's a good idea. Um, and I, I think what, what my suggestion, Charlene, uh, and all of you is that we've got to get somebody to be the vice chair that actually comes to the meetings. Uh, <coughs> I, think, I think it's very, very important. And I. 
I think everyone, everyone has contributed, but it's really tough, uh, you know, if, if people don't come. So yeah. I think I would suggest talking carefully around that issue, but yeah. it's a very important one. And, and with your liaison here from the Board of Selectmen, we really need board members because we're going to be down. We're going to be down a regular member, and we still have two associate openings. Yeah. Yeah. I know they have a meeting tomorrow to introduce whether it's for this or not. I'm not sure. Yes. That's great. And I'm happy to talk to anybody who may be interested in serving on the planning board. Uh, you know, I'm, yep. I'm happy to talk to anybody. And if they're not available during the day and would like to meet in the evening hours. I'm sure I can accommodate that too. Okay. It's an important board. Do I hear the motion? That motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.